Columbia officer can't stop saying racial slur. It is sad, but police officers have a long history of being biased against minority groups, especially African American folk. The most common instance of this is officers openly using racist slurs and hurtful language, like this officer in South Carolina, who said the N-word twice in confrontation with a black man outside of a bar. The altercation happened back in 2020, when the pandemic was still ravaging communities. There were mandatory bar curfews in place that didn't allow anybody to stay out and drink past 11 p.m. Enter Sergeant Chad Walker, who was on duty clearing out a bar in the Five Points neighborhood right after it was past 11 p.m. Now, this doesn't go over well with some folk and some words were said to the officer. Body cam video released by the department shows Walker responding to a muffled comment from a male patron saying, you're a little colorblind, sir. Things then move outside the bar. Sergeant Walker goes up to a white patron who had also said some things to the officer and asked them blatantly what their problem was. The customer says, my issue is you talking to these people of color as if they are less than human. People of color, the gentleman right there that called me a Damn, that's Brian, that's that guy that just called me a Walker, who is white, used the racially charged slur at least two times before the bar patrons started asking him to not use that term. People got pretty upset, but the officer was not backing off. He then proceeded to confront the black gentleman who allegedly called the officer the slur first. Things got pretty heated. However, the black man completely denies ever using that word. As things kept escalating, the black gentleman was dragged away by his friends before things got way out of hand. But Walker still kept going against the rest of the crowd, not fully grasping the context and weight of the term he was using. I was called that, I can say it back. He can say it to me, but I can't say it to him. Why? One of the customers reminded Walker that he was white, and it doesn't matter if he was called the N-word, but Walker responded to him by saying, Who cares what color I am? He called me a word! It's a racist word! Seeing that the situation wasn't going to calm down anytime soon. Other officers stepped in and tried to pull Walker away from the crowd. At the same time, a woman in the crowd could be heard saying, everyone just needs to walk away. While leaving, Officer Walker said, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna sit there and be called derogatory names. After the videos from the altercation went viral on social media, Sergeant Walker was fired by the Columbia Police Department. The decision by the disciplinary board was pretty unanimous, saying that the 14-year veteran violated two core policies one about neglecting duty, and another regarding being courteous on duty. The department's police chief, Skip Holbrook, said, As I've stated before, when setbacks occur and mistakes are made, we must be willing to acknowledge them, fix them, learn from them, and continue to move forward together. Number two, traffic officer loses it. Back in December 2022, a traffic incident in Waterbury, Connecticut ended up triggering a meltdown from the traffic police officer who was on the job at the time. Officer James Hinkle was directing traffic at the intersection of Thomaston Avenue and Homer Street around 12 p.m. after a mechanical failure with the traffic light. While directing traffic, a vehicle drove through the intersection. Hinkle had directed the vehicle to stop. The driver kept on driving. The officer's hand slammed the side of the vehicle, and then the driver pulled off the car. In the body cam footage, Officer Hinkle can be heard viciously screaming at the woman who drove past him. He then approached the car and continued to berate the driver. Did you not see this bright yellow vest standing in the middle of the street? No, I did. I thought you were leaving. No, I this did. means stop. I, this means stop. I didn't see that until I was already past And then you still drove by me. The woman repeatedly apologized to the officer and asked him to stop yelling at her. She tried to explain that the whole situation got very confusing, and she didn't see the officer wave until she had already driven past but the officer would not hear a word. It's a bright yellow jacket standing in the middle of the street. What don't you 
The cop kept screaming at the woman, saying that she almost ran him over. Soon after, another police car arrived and a sergeant steps onto the scene. The sergeant tells Officer Hankel to calm himself and led him away from the woman. The woman, who remains anonymous, was ticketed at the scene but the charges were taken back later. Soon after the incident, an internal affairs investigation was conducted to review Officer Hankel's behavior and actions during the traffic stop. He was put on administrative leave for the time being. After a thorough investigation, Officer Hinkle was fired from the force on January 9th. The Waterbury Police Chief, Fernando Spagnolo, came out with an explanation saying, As a result of the internal affairs investigation, Officer Hinkle was terminated from the Waterbury Police Department. His conduct during this encounter with a citizen of the community is unacceptable and not representative of the men and women serving the Waterbury Police Department. The chief said that this incident was brought to his attention by other officers in the department. I haven't seen a case in my 30 years here that has undermined the public's trust more than this, the chief said. It really rocks you to the core. Chief Spagnolo also told the press that he'd had a talk with the woman after her encounter with Hinkle. She's been very amicable to us. She's come to the police station and been in my office and told me she recognizes that almost everyone at the Waterbury Police has treated her with respect, he said. Number 3. Rookie Officer Shoots Teenager On October 2, 2022, a truly scary incident of police violence happened in San Antonio, Texas, when a rookie officer lost control trying to confront a suspect solo. The young cop, named James Brennan, fired multiple shots at a teenager named Eric Cantu, who was just eating in a McDonald's parking lot with his girlfriend. The shooting left the 17-year-old in critical condition. The incident happened around 10.45 p.m. when the police got a call about a disturbance at a McDonald's in North Central San Antonio. According to Captain Elisa Campos, Brennan, who had just come on the force seven months ago, saw a car that he thought was stolen and had run away the day before. Later investigations revealed that although the car's registration plates didn't match the vehicle, the car was not stolen. Brennan called for backup to help him out with the alleged stolen car. But before anyone else got there, abruptly opened the driver's side door and ordered the 17-year-old Eric Cantu to step out of the car, according to Captain Campos. Why? Mr. Cantu asked, looking confused with the food still in his mouth. While the car door was still open, Cantu put the car in reverse and tried to leave, said Captain Campos. The officer was hit by the open door, she said. The officer then stepped back and opened fire on the vehicle as the driver reversed away from him. The driver shifted the vehicle to drive and then turned away from the officer to leave, and the officer shot several more times at the fleeing vehicle. The authorities found the victim, Cantu, and his girlfriend a block away from the McDonald's parking lot where the shooting happened. Police reports say that Brennan did in fact violate his training and police procedures when he approached the car. The consequences of Brennan's actions were grave. He was fired immediately from the force. A grand jury indicted him on two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant and one count of attempted murder. Bexar County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez explained that one of the aggravated assault charges is for shooting Cantu and the other is for shooting in the direction of his female passenger. The attempted murder charge relates to the shooting of Cantu. These are serious charges and could result in a lengthy prison sentence if Brennan is found guilty. Despite these allegations, Brennan's lawyer, Nico LaHood, thinks that there has been a rush to judgment attitude. According to LaHood, Brennan's side of the story hasn't been told yet and more information is forthcoming. Meanwhile, Mr. Cantu was discharged from the hospital after almost two months of needing critical care. He is still on the mend, as his parents stated. He still has a long road to recovery. His family and supporters continue to call for justice. The family attorney, Ben Crump, who has represented some of the county's most high-profile cases of police brutality, said that the indictments came as a relief for the family. He added, Eric and his family are grateful for the outpouring of support they have received, not only in Eric's fight for survival, but also in our fight for full justice. Today, we are one step closer. I hope that Cantu gets the justice that he deserves. If you want to watch more such videos, subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.